Absolutely. Well, look at this. We got our, our next guest coming in. I'm gonna I'm gonna let her in. And uh Alexandra, please go ahead and give out your, your website and information and where people can find you and contact you. Sure. It's forbiddenknowledgetv.net. I send a daily newsletter. It's free. Um, and you can sign up right there on the, on the homepage. Hi, Carrie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just looking. <laughs> okay. So our, I'm sorry, are you Alexandra um, from... Forbidden new, um, you, you, mm -hmm. excellent. We've never met <laughs> in person. I know it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, we have a mutual friend. Especially because we, I know we have a, a mutual, a really good friend of mine and yours, Bill. And uh, and um and and you know, I'd love to have you on my show. I don't know if you ever got the message. Maybe not, because I know you had a bunch of things go wrong. Re, not yeah, no, I didn't get. I did not get enough. Yeah, I'd love to have you on my show. So it's it's oh, great, great to see you. Yeah. I will I will Thank connect you. you to you. I'll connect you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All, All right. right. Thank you much, Alexandra. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. And we'll talk here soon. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Carrie Cassidy, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And so interesting world we live in, Carrie. I would say. Uh, so I don't know what's happening at the border right now, but you know Trump's announcement basically saying states should send their National Guard down there. I don't know. Do you know what's going on there? Um, I think that we were, me and Alexandra were just talking about this. Oh. My theory is that we are going to witness a massive false flag operation. And oh. the reason I say that is Trump is the one who publicly came out and said 25 governors send your national guards to texas now they're doing that right when those people get there what happens next it gets blamed on trump yes yeah i thought of that uh well i i'm not so sure you know they can make it stick though uh i i, I think agree. the texas governors are going to you know they're really front and center and they are you know governor singular <laughs> but anyway uh I, I've been watching some of that news, and I think that they they really came out and they did um, more or less ask for support. Now, of course, sure that you know the judicial system being what it is, which is completely compromised, and of course is looking for any excuse to put Trump back on charges for everything. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and so I, you know, I, I get that along the lines, but uh, I guess what I really mean is that I don't think that it's going to stick. In fact, I think that this might even, you know, this this is basically where we were headed all along to a civil war slash revolution in our country. And I think we're seeing that everywhere in, um, you know, I guess you saw Patriot Street Fighter. He was uh talking to Ann Vandersteel and um forget the other guy's name. Um, Pete well, Santilli. No, yeah, Pete Santilli. Uh and and you know talking about avoiding some incident at the border and going to your to your local places where the refugees are kept. Um I did put a video on yesterday early from a guy who went to one of those places and he was trying to film they were all behind black tent things inside a building. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that video. Anyway, uh, kind of fascinating, hiding them from cameras, exactly. Yeah. And hiding how many there might be even there. So we're in a very uh, sort of sticky situation. I think, I think uh, this could get, it could get crazy, you know. I mean, National Guard, uh, th that's substantial, right? They they barely showed up on January 6th. I think once you have National Guard from the states, you know, they are um, under orders, if I understand it correctly, not, not from Trump, but from their state governors, right? That's how it goes. Well, right. So right now, so yes, the, the president of the United States can nationalize the state National Guards. Governors can call up the National Guards, and then the Speaker of the House can uh, federalize the D.C. National Guard, as well as the mayor of D.C. So it's kind of like there's there's various different points of how that jurisdiction works. 
But right now, all the National Guards being called up are state authorized. The governors have basically declared, they have to declare an emergency at the border, and then they can send their National Guards to support. A lot of the states are sending state troopers. Okay. And so we had a trail of Florida state troopers heading into Texas uh, that DeSantis sent. Uh, oh, great. And Nome sent some state troopers there as well, but also National Guard. Well, um, she, um, but also if you sort of roll the camera back, so to speak, uh, you go back to Trump, but he actually won. He activated the mm -hmm. National Guard. Um, I guess you know that, right? They've been active all this time, at least according to, uh, you know, to Derek Johnson. Had you had you heard that? So yes, and I, I'm in contention with Derek Johnson a lot. But I know, I with know, the, but on that I know, particular, I, I mean, but with the. Is it with the National Guard thing, yeah, he, they activated them. So you remember, Donald Trump put out a memorandum of uh, activating the National Guard of the 20,000 troops for Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser to approve for January 6th. Right. And I realized that, <clears throat> that was not approved, uh, although right. didn't they show up at the end? They showed up at, well, they showed up at the end, and that came about because Chris Miller, um, they were basically... They were waiting for the approval, but since then it became a uh, uh, an out of control situation. The Capitol Police is the one that I believe that came out and authorized it, and they finally had the authorization to send in the National Guard, and that's why it was many hours late. Now people are trying to pin this on. Oh, I do believe Millie was involved in this, although Millie Millie has zero military authority over that command structure. Um, but it, it's a screwed up situation where the command chain of command really broke down in that process. But Trump and Chris Miller really had their shit together that day. Yeah. And they basically, if we look at the blame in that situation, it goes on the Speaker of the House. It goes on Mayor Bowser. It goes on those people on the ground, the, cap, the head of the Capitol Police. It was their fault for denying the assistance from Trump um, and being that arrogant. But they, they didn't do that because of arrogance. They did that on purpose because they knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And I think that Trump knew what was going to happen, too. And they kind of allowed it to happen because I believe that Trump had an operation to get Nancy Pelosi's laptop that day, and they absolutely got it. Well, I think that could have been one of the mo more um, undercover moves. But I can say, mm -hmm. though, again, I believe that they have been operational. And the way, I don't know if you follow Monkey Works. Do you follow Monkey Works at all? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so he has documented this, um, you know, through his process where he shows you where the planes are and this and that. So uh, my understanding is not only have the National Guard been activated since, uh, but they actually have gone outside the country as well on operations. Mm -hmm. That's also, well, that's Monkey Works has been filming this. Do you need to talk to somebody or bring somebody on over there because you keep looking over there i just want to give you i got chats going on no i got chats uh -oh. going on so we're, i'm just I'm, I'm monitoring the chats i got one mod so i, I have to monitor the chats with my mod so I oh i see all right no worries uh so i was just wondering i thought maybe there was a person that wanted to talk to you or yeah. something anyway uh so yeah so so that's i think something we could look into i think maybe neither of us is getting it completely right as far as where trump's and this gets into a whole huge story, right? Because if Trump is, and I know you don't necessarily think so, but I certainly do. And Jan Halper Hayes has stated it on a British television show, as you know, that Trump mm -hmm. is still uh, the CIC and he is also the uh, commander, you know, his commander in chief and he's the president now. And he never stepped down, actually. So, but of the Republic, and then we have the US corporation but that has also been dissolved by Trump by executive order prior to when he left office. You know, so if you get into the whole devolution and there's great uh, educational articles on devolution.link for those that aren't, you know, sort of up to speed on what is called continuity of government, government or COG, that is uh, clearly what is operational, if, if you ask me. So I think that this has, not only sort of been the white hats fall back and safeguard this whole time for any actions they have taken as well as trump you understand what i'm saying because mm -hmm. they're doing it under cog and they will prove that 
In fact, they should have pro proven it already, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we've been waiting for the proof. We've been waiting for them to come forward and acknowledge what they've been doing, what the operation has been during this time that our government was basically taken over by a foreign power. And uh, this is something that Juan has said numerous times, and I have, I absolutely agree, 100%. So I'm not sure where you stand on that, but I think it's really important because this is, these are the lands, in, if, you know, the scene we're entering at this time. Right. And so for me, I, I, I was former military, you know this, Carrie. Yeah. Um, I look at things differently. I was, uh, I was certified with FEMA uh, through continuity of government in Washington, D.C. as a regional director. Um, when I look at kind of uh, Patel Patriot, John's information or Derek's information, there's a lot of things I disagree with. With devolution, there's a whole series of steps that have to happen before that. Um, and with PEDS, the moment that a PED is enacted, it actually becomes public. And it has to go through congressional approval after the fact. But one of the things that I'll, I'll state just on that is I have a theory that's very similar, but it doesn't involve devolution. And this goes to a guy by the name of General Dan King. Raise, remember Donald Trump during 2021 and 22 his rallies, he'd go, raising Dan King. When he was talking about how ISIS got demolished in Syria and Afghanistan, the guy who ran the special the special operation forces in Afghanistan and Syria was General Raising Dan Kane. All right. Okay. And when I heard Trump start putting this out there, he put it out during the presidency and he put it out afterwards. I said, "Who is this guy?" I go research this guy. Mm -hmm. He was an F fifteen pilot over Washington, D.C. on September 11th, one of two F-15 pilots in the sky who chased whatever that was that flew into the Pentagon, got the direct orders from the vice president to not engage. Vice president has zero military authority, okay? And then he had a, a classified briefing at the 9-11 Commission, which is still classified today. Okay. So what did he know about 9-11? By the way, his commander, um, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, General Worley, uh, I know this for a fact because I worked at the Washington Navy Yard Police Department and I received the be on the lookout, the BOLO alert for a guy who showed up at the DC Metro train crash. This was one of the Metro trolleys. All three emergency brakes failed. The primary brakes, the electric brakes, and then the emergency handbrake all failed. All the people, nine people, including General Worley and his wife, and when first responders got there, they said there was a, a green Jeep Grand Cherokee with DOD plates and a guy with a badge around his neck with Defense Pentagon Services, um, DPS, sifting through the debris. And they asked him who he was. They asked him for credentials because you should, instead of a badge, you should have credentials. He didn't have credentials. So they detained him. They took him down to the police station. And they said a four-star general came in moments later and said, that's my guy, you need to release him. They let them both go and neither one of their credentials turned out to be correct and he was not a general and they just let this guy go. To me, that is an intelligence hit. That is the intelligence community sure. doing a hit on that general. Why? During that time, I was a, a Ron Paul supporter. I was working in Washington, D.C. I was one of the first 100 me members of the Oath Keepers and I ran a lot of the meetings out in Washington, D.C. for the Oath Keepers and Northern Virginia. We were working with um, Alex Jones, Luke Rakowski, and all these guys. We were getting the, pen, uh, the FEMA photographer who was on ground on September 11th in Central, uh, sorry, September 10th. He was in Central Park as a FEMA photographer for a FEMA exercise on September 10th, 2000, uh, 2001. He was, uh, he was from, he's Portuguese. He takes the pictures. You remember the pictures of the open safe in Building 7, of the, of the 767 engines and the debris? He's the one that took those pictures, and he had a whole bunch of pictures that were not released. He was about to release all these other pictures, and the whole thing got canceled. So kind of okay, had that what? intimate experience in all that, right? Okay, okay. But if you were that close to it, what was supposed to come out? So what was going to come out from what I got, the, I, I was middleman, but from what I got is the FEMA photographer had evidence that it wasn't planes that brought down the Twin Towers, okay? Right. Absolutely was not planes that brought down the Twin Towers. And Worley was going to talk about what happened in the airspace over Washington, D.C., which we believe 
was a cruise missile or a drone, basically a drone mocked up as an airline that was remotely flown. And I believe that this is what Raisin Dan Kane in the air saw, is that it was too small to be a plane, it was most likely a drone or a cruise missile dressed as a plane. And so Raisin Dan Kane, he rises up through the ranks, 2016, he gets appointed by Donald Trump. And th there's a little context here too. 2012, Barack Obama fires 198 general officers from the military. Right. Who were those general officers and why did they get fired? Sure. What led up to that, right? You have massive data leaks that occurred through the NSA, Project Prism, uh, Snowden. Before this, you have Flint at DIA. Okay, one of the biggest ones. Anybody but, who was fired by Barack Obama would have, in theory, gone over to Trump. 100% agree. 100% so they, agree. They could easily have rehired those generals. Yeah. Well, some of them, but most of those, nope. They just want. Why not? So I was, why not? I mean, you, I mean, I don't know you know, what kind of chain of command we've got in Space Force, you know, behind the scenes, these different, uh, maybe they're using a different kind of rank and file rather than go through the, you know, official military channels back in the day when Trump was first in office in 2016. You know, I don't know the thinking behind decisions made. I'm just saying logic dictates that those, those you're saying 190, that's a lot, okay? Yeah, 198. So there's about, usually about 600, general officers and you know one third of them were eliminated now from what i got is when i was in washington dc doing all of these things i met some really good people some really good patriots that were high up in government government one of them was a four-star admiral in the navy worked for kennedy worked for reagan uh did national security briefings and he laid so we were talking about 9 11 and he laid all of this out that there has been a war between sure. the deep state and constitutional generals for a very long time. Yep. That one of the biggest things that is happening out there is that there's generals, there's colonels, there's people with access to various programs. There is congressmen, senators, people in the bureaucracy that are selling US secrets to foreign entities, to foreign countries, to private organizations and making money off. It. And that these generals, sought to unveil that and find out who they were. So they created a special program inside of the NSA classified to spy on congressmen, senators, defense contractors, foreign nationals. Does this sound familiar? Because that's exactly what Edward Snowden exposed was that exact program, Project Prism. Okay. So, so Snowden came from the CIA, protege of John Brennan, infiltrated the NSA, exposed the program that the generals were using to find out who the deep state was. This is why Pizzagate drops at the same time, because they're trying to find out who's selling state secrets. All the generals associated with the good, the patriotic generals, okay? This is why they bring in Trump. This is why they go to Trump. They bring in Trump. The first thing he does is gets um, raising Dan Kane in there. He eliminates ISIS, ISO, which was nothing more than a U.S. intelligence operation. Sure. You know this. You were telling me this the other day. So where does Raisin Dan Kane go directly after this? He leads the Pentagon Special Access Programs uh, Department, which means okay. that he is the one general in control of every single special access program and cap program in the United States Defense Department and DARPA. He means he has... He's read into every single program. Okay, but, and he but okay, wait. You're saying you're saying this guy Dan was was that person? Dan and Dan, he Raising left. Dan King. Really? Huh? Okay, then Raising what Dan about King. the unacknowledged yep. special access programs? Did he also know yep. about those? Everything, every single special access program that we have, whether unacknowledged or not, goes under this man. And you know that because why? I can pull it up right now. Because I, as far as I know, unacknowledged special access programs are not acknowledged. So how can you say who heads it? You know what I'm saying? Well, you so the military has a record of just about in the UAP P hearing. You, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's fine. I, oh, yeah. I'm not questioning the rest of what you're saying. I'm simply, you know, because I'm actually on no, this I know, train I know. right now. I think it's That's really perfect. important. These unacknowledged special access programs are part of 
what, what I know of as the secret space program. And this involves our defense uh, contractors and doing secret projects. And I just wrote about this and then I, I just, yep. you know, wrote about it in an article. It's on my, my website. So September 19th, and did or a video September 2019 to September 2021, Director of Special Programs and Director of Special Access Programs Central Office. I know, but see, unacknowledged with the U in front of it, it's not the same thing. You know that. Well, so yeah, I do. And what you got with unacknowledged special access programs, this is black budget money that is That's what I'm the saying. DOD through other special access programs to defense contractors in the military industrial complex. And it's complex. also linked to SES, Senior Executive Correct. Service. Okay. And this I, one I has been agree. talking about this lately. Not, not, in, not in disagreement with you. Okay. But here's the thing. Raising Dan Kane yeah. oversees all these special access programs and I the funding it. for that. Okay. So he's Trump's man in special access programs at right. this time. Now, see, I wonder if he well, even had. Did you ever talk to this guy? I mean, you're in military. You you seem to attract his career. Mm -hmm. I, I have not talked to him. He's I, alive. I, I've not even tried Is to, he alive? Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, he, he's absolutely alive. He worked as the Pentagon liaison to the CIA after that. Which is kind of interesting, right? Um, and where is and he now? Do you know where he is retired. now? I believe he's retired now um, after Biden came into office. But the interesting thing yeah, is- Yeah, I don't here, think that's a good idea. Um, in other words, I'm not so sure that's true. Why would a person that is so valuable to Trump, you know, during these times, right, retire? Maybe that's a cover story, uh, you know. And the other thing is, if he was head of special access programs and everything else, which is kind of an amazing idea, that would be, I would think, something like the role that Bobby Ray Inman has been playing for many, many years. You know Bobby Ray Inman? I don't know. Okay, you know of him? I've heard of him, yes. Well, <laughs> Captain Mark Richards said he's the person who knows the most of the, of the entire world. This sounds really pretty amazing, but he reported to him, he says he knows the most of the off-planet uh, interaction with our planet. OK, so he knows the mm -hmm. most about that. And he also knows the most about a lot of things. I mean, the guy has been behind the scenes quietly for a long, long time. Military will cer certainly know him. Uh, I don't know what his relationship would have been with this guy, Dan. OK, but I'm also wondering if the guy, I mean, someone, I don't know how they can do it, but someone needs to find out if he was head of unacknowledged special access program because see that links directly to the to the secret space program and, I, I and it is part yep. of a of a structure that i am trying to sketch out at least on in my mind if not you know on paper because we don't know anything about that this this is the quintessential secret government okay so mm -hmm. i i'm wondering did trump get that access i still wonder about that do you hear what I'm saying? So I do. Remember, uh, uh, Heine Hashem came out. He is, the former Israeli uh, head of uh, space defense came out. Right. And that interview in December of 2020 saying that Trump met with the Galactic Federation. Now, the time frame that Trump would have met with the Galactic Federation is around September 2020 within this operation and everything that's going on and probably even command and control structure of it in the sense that, hey, I just, he just he told 25 governor, governors to dispatch their National Guard to Texas and they're doing it. I mean, that's massive power, right? Well, this is the point I'm trying to make. In other words, we may be quibbling over a technicality, but nonetheless, yeah, I, it's kind of important. I think that's what we're kind of it's at. an important technicality. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to care about it. I don't know about you. I, I know that the, the world. I care or, about you. And the, <laughs> I care about you. And, and although we might have a difference of opinion. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. no I love you. At the end of the day, no we really don't know. No, we don't. At the end of the day, we really but, don't but know. I'm trying, what so I'm saying is, just to clarify so that the question yeah. is clear in people's minds, because this is going to be so important in my view. Okay, what was Trump and, and his group in charge of and what weren't they in charge of? Why did certain things, were they allowed to happen? Now, one of the things that, um, I'm not going to name the person's name because I don't want to give them a, sort of a, a platform, if you will. But this, there's a certain person, hey there, <laughs> James, great to see you. Oh, hey, I, here I am. 
a certain person Harry, out there. I'm driving deep in some text. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> so I'm driving Josh crazy over here. No. Uh, so there's I've a certain person. The last person. 15 minutes. Keep, keep driving him crazy. He needs okay. it. All right. So there's a certain person out there who basically I found out works for a general. Now that particular general is on the New World Order side. Okay. And that person is out there telling people that Trump withheld paychecks of our military, okay? And that was one of their gripes, supposedly. But when you dig in deeper, you find out that part of the military was looking for their paychecks from Rothschild. This is how insane it is. So if you think you know the chain of the command and who they report to and how SES, it, it works in there. And Juan has been talking recently about how the FBI were on the SES payroll, but it's all off the books. How do you argue about something off the books? He found out about it. I don't know how, but that means Trump knows about it. And I have a bunch more to say about the satellite surveillance that is being kind of ignored in all discussions, which is driving me crazy. So I, I did a whole presentation a year or two ago, but I think we should dig into that. Okay, <laughs> what's happening? Go ahead, go ahead. And, and how do I argue with it is, and just in my rebuttal, how do I argue with it is, I've made a series of predictions since 2020. Consistently, those things have come true. We've so seen have I. them all so unfold. I, my friend. I know, I know, and we've seen them unfold. And that's following the, the kind of, the, as the way I've seen the narrative and the way that I've seen it play out. I so for me, that. that's that's validation towards my perspective, where you have validation towards your perspective. Okay. And like I said, we might disagree. But we do agree but, on COG, right? But we're still I on mean, the same side. So we're still right? on the same side here, right? Yeah, We're still absolutely. on the same side, and that's what it matters. But, but let, me, let me jump in here for ahead. a second. Go ahead. Because Kerry brought up a really good point. We're, we're you know, Rothschild's paying the military or something like that? Well, well, you know, so how, how would we find out about it? The Federal Reserve was, hasn't been, oh, uh, audited in, what, a million years? <laughs> Getting around. Actually, it was audited during the CARES Act. The CARES Act had folded the central bank, the Federal Reserve, in, into the U.S. Treasury and Trump, the master of debt, an opportunity for the first time ever with his team to go forensically look at 100 and what? 1307 years of Federal Reserve, and I'm sure he learned a lot. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, I've got some secret stuff I want to put out here, um, if yeah. you let me. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I don't want to get too off topic. So I, I want to touch on this satellite surveillance thing that I've recently been talking about a lot. You're talking about uh, this, uh, what Dan Crane did, that he was basically assigned to create a secret um, spy spy activity over members of Congress and this and that, right? At a certain point. And, and you're suggesting, I'm not sure who you're telling, who, who assigned him that job? Do you, do you know, remember who you're saying? Trump? Probably Trump. Did Trump create the special access programs before he left office, Josh? For for Dan Kane, no, that that office has always been there, uh, yeah. but that is where Dan Kane, General Dan Kane, was appointed during Donald Trump's administration towards the end of it. But given a special project himself to put together a group of people that would then go out and spy on the spies, I guess you might say, right? Right. That that's what we got from it. Is that there was a that the reason he did that was because Trump would have direct access to create a special access program, plus could get read in the, under any special access program he wanted. Okay. So, so Josh, a year and a half ago, we had you and I had Juan Seven on DEFCON 5, mm -hmm. and when you brought the special access program, he said, yeah, he chooses that over devolution every day of the week. He said you were the closest to, not, he said not exactly right, but closest to anybody. I acknowledge in the public special domain, access. It's not just... Special access. I'm just saying, I'm just repeating what Juan said okay. and Josh and I. Well, on one air. of the technicalities that Juan said that because of the fact that Josh didn't use the word unacknowledged. You understand? Well, I mean, you I, might I think, think that unacknowledged are completely are, are separate from, from people, in the sense of the cog. I think unacknowledged are what we're talking about there is we're talking about the secret space force. Yeah. We're talking about high level technology. And I think if that is the cream of the crop that 
what <laughs> these both sides are going for. Yeah. I think that they're trying to it get came into up, this and listen, they can't. Listen to me. It came up in the UAP discussions. Do you, you, do you realize that? I don't know how close yeah. you watched that. I watched I, I, it. I, I, had, I had people in the room. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> The word is unacknowledged special access programs. If you don't bring unacknowledged, then Juan can answer you. He's a lawyer, <laughs> a trained lawyer. So he's not going to answer a question that wasn't, you know, ask, asked. He's not going to talk about something that wasn't spoken about. Unacknowledged special access. You didn't say the word unacknowledged. I'm just, I'm just highlighting that. The reason I know so much about this is because as someone who studies closely the secret space program, I know when that word is mentioned, and I know that that's huge when it comes to what we're talking about. It's beyond secret, okay? It's beyond secret of secret, right? So it's it's a level way up. It's you know way above top secret, if you want to, whatever you want to call it. So so um, I just want to say that now I want to get to the satellites, okay? Just one little bit about the satellites, Project Leonid. Do you guys know about Project Leonid? I just talked about it again. Anthony Sanchez is a researcher and a software executive or engineer, however you want to call him, who got involved with Lockheed, Mountains, uh, Lockheed Martin scientists. This is several years ago, found out about Project Leonid. And what it was is they actually, um, I guess, uh, left their jobs. They went and contacted him. They told him about these special, um, this special project, right? Yep. And 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 Anthony was okay. So I interviewed Anthony Anthony about this. After the interview, he drove down to Southern California to do the interview with me. We were only he and me and a couple other people in the room at the time. It was a long wow. interview. Is on camera, etc. In person, he drove back to Northern California, put his car in the garage, locked it up as normal, windows up, the whole thing. Went to sleep with his family that night got up in the morning, went out to his car, and inside, inside the window, there was a note basically threatening him, saying, if you talk about anything about this Project Leonid to the public, and especially any technical details, but your family will, okay? I got a phone yeah. call the same morning from a spy, okay, who I had known for a long time. And he gave me the same, he delivered the same message to me about Anthony and asked me to call Anthony and tell him why I couldn't release the interview. I've never released the interview. You understand? That's, that's, <laughs> all right. So, so this is Project Leonid. Now, what without, is Project Leonid? Without any technical de I understand. I totally respect it. I get it. Without any technical details, what is Project Leonid? Okay, it's, you know, a, it's, it's a network it? of nano satellites that are self replicating built yep. by Lockheed Martin scientists who partway yep. through the building of these satellites. And I can tell you that secretly they report to something called mother, which is another piece that I found out from a person that I met in an airport. Okay. Which is in a foreign country. Right, so, okay. But, but so, so, let so me look, go back. I don't know anything about this and this is perfect, which means I, no one's ever told me anything. Okay. I don't have any classified information, but let me ask some questions. And you answer the best of your ability. So nano satellites sound like they're extremely small. You can't see it and with it, the naked eye. Right, I understand that. So that's why I'm, why I'm confirming that. Uh, that's a question. I know what nano is. I just want to make sure it's that small. Uh, two, uh, could they be distributed worldwide by the chemtrails? Possible. I mean, I don't know how they get them up Are there. Just, no no one knows how they're distributed, right? We don't know if it's maybe in the chemtrails, which we can see with our eye, the spray, or maybe right. it's done in a different way. What are your thoughts? I don't know, but I think they're not in low Earth orbit. <laughs> That's my thought. Got it. So they're, they're going to go up there and stay up there. And we'll never see it for sure. And it's you done. This is done. We're talking six, seven, eight years ago. This happened. I, I okay. understand. And then and so this is, this is Bill Gates dimming, but that's the cover story for those nano satellites. Okay. Now, subsequent to that, Elon Musk has his own satellite grid, right? But it's yep. not on the level of- Starlink satellites. Yes. Keep going. But it's not on the level of the, what I'm talking about, which again, no, I am only, okay, Anthony has done interviews about this quite a long time ago. 
but he never, Bonnie. whatever he said to me, he wasn't allowed to say to anyone else. And I'm not okay. actually disclosing anything that he hasn't already said. Okay. So let, uh, let's right. make and that not, clear because I don't want to get up. Get, well, okay? let's, let's just stay in Starlink for one second. All right. See this? It's a satellite. Just say it's a, it's a you know long satellite, right? The other day, I had a friend, telecom industry, major telecom, right? He was at, at a telecom conference in 2000 or so and sat next to an electronic engineer who sat next to, you know, sat next to him at a lunch, you know, at a lunch. And my friend said, hey, by the way, what's in those satellites? And you think a communication satellite would be loaded with communications, right? 10%. My pinky, 10% was for communications, 90% were for financial. They were building the CBDC 30 years ago, just right. putting that out there. Okay, and, and I, you know, I have no problem believing that. <laughs> so, okay, and so the, the, the reason... The question is, does the reset want to do what? They want us to be controlled through our phones, obviously. And who's in charge of the satellites now? Is it is it the, the, the black hats or is it US Space Force in control of these satellites, financial satellites, the ones we can not see? so sure. Also private project Leonid. I mean, this is a big, these are big questions. But yeah, I, the are. reason I want to explain why I brought this up is because Josh Please. and I are talking about the secret project to spy on spies that Crane was part of. And I want to say that it's interesting, I wonder if they knew about these satellites, because if you're gonna spy on spies, you're gonna need satellites. You understand that, right? Oh, totally. So this is where we're going, okay? And I just, you know, I talk on my recent publication that I did this video, I talked about what is Pine Gap, which is a place where they monitor everything. And you know that even the average satellites are said to be able to see something down on the ground uh, the size of a quarter, read text yep. on a page. So I ask you, you know, we are so surveilled and, and I'm not even talking about the single AI that is surveilling their planet that I have got multiple independent confirmation of from whistleblowers, okay? And people that don't even consider themselves whistleblowers like Dr. Mont Mount, who just said it on a video and he's army intelligence. Okay. so. So I just wanted that out there. Okay. Now I have some secret information that I'd like to share with you. All right. Can right. I, can I do that? And I'm going to have Please. to be a little careful. So, so don't go crazy right here. Um, I, I won't react. Promise. Keep going. This is okay. for the audience. Anyway, it's not for, for, not for James. Grundy. Okay. Go this ahead. is not planned or anything. This particular person says he does not trust 107. That's how he starts. Fine. His little, That's fine. Um, you know, but, but you know, arguably one has to tell the truth, but also has he must give some misdirects occasionally because otherwise you won't have any secrets, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so here we go. So he said that he doesn't think that the White Hats, or if they have this information, I think, you know, and there's also this issue where you think they don't know, but they might know, you just don't know they know, that kind of thing. Okay, just saying yeah. that. Okay, so, but he says, the banking information, he says it has been run because you brought this up, the CBDC thing. I think that's yeah, what it's I did. called. So he, this is the background. He said Bedford International Financial Group, okay? Bedford mm -hmm. Universal Trust paid for all the militaries globally so that no single group or person could, could control, wrestle control over that. He said this goes back to George Bush presidency. Mm -hmm. Dick Cheney, yep. who wrestled yep. the control for paying the military globally, Homeland Security, um, and so on and so forth. And he names, of all things, Enlil, okay? Uh, unfortunately, no one will listen to him and the White Hats, I guess, is basically what he's saying. Uh, and the, he says the Russian ruble, this is a side issue, but, you know, Juan does talk a lot about being involved in the takedown of that. So he said yep. it was done with one bat guamo bond that was monetized known as bonus 3380. Now this is very high level stuff, okay? Stuff that goes above what everyone ever talks about because this person is associated with 
the original, and I know a few of these people, and believe me, I don't even know why they talk to me, but they do. They trust me. Uh, now, he didn't okay. say to not say this, so I, I figure it's all it's fair game. Um, he said it was that was handled uh, there that the Guamo bond was monetized, known as Bonus 3380, handled by Dr. Zvonko Burdick. Uh, his father was the second M1. OK, and that's an important role, which is like MJ1, I imagine, but M1 in the financial world. Um, and better known as the Black Dragon, monetary controller of the collateral accounts. Not this, <laughs> you know, not what we're talking about. So we were talking, Josh, I don't know if you heard this part that I told, but anyway, oh, you can go back and listen. I don't want to repeat it. What the guy I'm, I'm in touch with is just like a synchronicity. We are talking about who pays the military and he is basically saying who they get paid by, okay? Which is a combination of Dick Cheney and Enlil who are some of, some of the principals involved in this above even the, the, the families in, um, in uh, Sweden. You, you understand about that, right? You know about yeah. that? The family structure in, in Sweden, you know that, right? Yeah, I'm Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. Not okay. No, not not Sweden, Switzerland. I'm sorry. Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, it's Europe, of course. Yeah, it's Switzerland. I'm sorry. I sometimes I I get those two mixed up. Anyway, oh, the home of CERN. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh it's very it's a certain certain. I've been there. Okay, the place where he's talking about. Anyway, so what we're looking at. Okay, on top of the. You know, now the Rothschilds are always sort of in the mix on some level. So they could be a lower level pay master, if you will. And they could also be where the SES funds is coming from that is paying this hidden money that even is being paid to the FBI to be operational. January 6, for example, that Juan has been talking about. So what yeah. we want to do and what we want to understand is where where are these lines of power really not what's out in the news okay because they don't talk about the real people this is very important okay so where do you want to go from here <laughs> josh um well marion hyman is going to be joining in too so we're going to have her coming in so we can oh, have uh, i guess a Hi. little interesting conversation there um but yeah i mean you know, the dy dynamic of how all this is working and structured, um, I think Dr. John Coleman from the 1990s, if you remember him, I've and, read and his the book, Committee of yes. 300. Yes. Yeah, the Committee of 300. I think that is one of the best structures to kind of visualize this with all the old uh, bloodlines, with the uh, the Black nobilities, the, uh, um, the royal dynasties. I, although I think that today, uh, many of them have lost that power and ability. And I think you guys would agree with me on that. Yeah. Um, but... What we're seeing right now is a, a transition of power. And I, I always look at this as a multi-headed hydra, right? Multi-headed hydra, and you have all these various different factions at the top that are warring with each other. And for the longest time, what we've been seeing is this war, this war of the roses between all of them, that's now actually playing out and heads are being cut off and removed. And I believe that Donald Trump, the Patriots, White Hats, that is one faction. That's why I, you know, I don't, necessarily agree with everything Elon Musk says, but it is an asset being used by the white hats, by the patriots, by the good guys. You know, Twitter is at least for now a safe haven for a lot of us. Uh, and there's a there's a lot of good billionaires out there that who maybe don't have our full best interest in mind. This is what we're trying to do. I want to I and this is related to exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the power George no Soros. one died. It's much better. It's radical protesters. New York, New York Post. Radical protests threaten to burn homes of mourners leaving Henry Kissinger memorial service. Meaning this is the awakening. You can't walk down the street. Soon anymore. they will not be able to walk down the street. Absolutely. So this is the real, the first I've seen. They go, they go, they, you know, they get an announcement. You go to Henry Kissinger's memorial service, and outside are all these. Patriots or all these angry people that want their pound of flesh and are going to get it. Right. Wow. This is this is the beginning, Josh, of the Great Awakening. Go ahead. 
No, it's all no, good. I mean, yep. we're talking about this now. Before you got here, James, the, the, the conversation was actually centered on COG, continuity yep. of government, and the fact that yep. this is going to be the platform that is going to be discussed and argued over as to why, how, why and how Trump remains CIC and arguably president of the republic dissolved the corporation and how COG was put in place when he supposedly stepped down, but didn't really step down, what decisions were made, who he was in, what part of the military he was in charge of. And, you know, Josh had said he didn't even know that there was a ceremony by the military in March, right after the January that reinstated Trump as CIC, the military did this. Right, and and Juan Savins made a, a cogent, argument that trump was 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 by the five branches of government at the time five branches of the military that is excuse me actually voted trump in based on the the uh dni report that was due on the 18th right. of, of december 2020 which came on the 19th of january and and the, the military goes okay we got a manchurian candidate in the office we don't know what and all that stuff we need 45 days to review it and what juan said the 45 days took us to march 6th from March 6th, when Juan told me at a dinner, personally, with me and John Chambers, three of us for five hours, laid it all out, and I believe it because it makes logical sense, he said each branch of the military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, and Space Force, all had, which is cyberspace, all had the opportunity to present their findings on, based on a DNI report. They had 45 days of review, and each had one day, and that brings us to a very special day, and let me say that day, March 11th. That's what I said. Okay. Now, why is March 11 important? Because it's three times 11, 33. It's a hoax number. And it's and 11, what, what happened three, here before? It's the reversal. World Health Organization, but they could have called it in January 2020. They waited to March 11th to call it. And there's something going on this March 11th. And I think the Federal Reserve told us what it's going to be. There's been short term lending. So they came with an announcement two days ago. That the short-term lending, whatever the facility is called, is like four-letter acronym. And I played it on my show two nights ago. Is coming to an end on March 11th, 2024. So there we go again. We're back in March 11 for the third time in four years. Okay, but on top of it, we go to the Department of Defense Law of War Manual. Okay, correct. This is something yep. that Juan has also cited over yep. and over again. Now, what yeah. they decided at the same time, and this goes back to COG, by the way, is it's written into the manual. And this is insane, in my opinion, but it is written into the manual. And I've talked about it numerous times on shows. And what it says is that our, our, our Navy, our, our, our entire military, when a country or our country is specifically tailored to the United States version of the Geneva Convention is how I... I understand it is put correct, but nonetheless, it says they have to wait a year, sit there being invaded for a year before they can absolutely walk in. And uh, you remember the CDC uh, zombie kit? Yeah, oh yeah, graphic zombie preparedness 2018. Um, well, according to Captain Mark Richards, uh, they want a population of passive super soldiers. So they want us to be in good condition, but take orders. Um, and then they'll take uh, us as armies off planet to control other civilizations. That's the idea, is control so, of space. So, so Mary, what happens if you take away testosterone? I guess we're not going to be super soldiers? Well, there's passivity, right? There's uh, estrogen dominance. There, there's, yeah. Whoa. Well, if they can't make us super soldiers, they might as well dumb us over and then remote control us. I don't know, Carrie, if you if you've heard of this person, Sabrina, that says that she was a, a DARPA baby and that her parents were were not didn't have enough money and donated her, and that they already have the the uh, yeah. technology to be able to remote. Have you heard of her? Yes, I have. And I actually invited her for an interview, but got no reply so far. Why um, did you? So, I, so I Sabrina say... Wallace, there, there, she has a lot of information here. I'm going to agree with that. She goes out and does trash other researchers, which I'm not really a big fan of. Just put out your own research and right. you don't have to trash out others, right? I mean, simply, 
Um, she, she apparently has gone through a lot. I'll say that she does have documents that look old and stuff, so I can't verify anything. But there, the MK Ultra program is very big, and she's probably a part of it. So I understand that. Yeah, but that technological expertise, I mean, we were told in Camelot 19 years ago that the secret yeah. space program is actually about 10,000 years in advance of our technology on surface Earth. So with that yeah. in mind, all of the things that she's talking about have already been done to all of us. Mm -hmm. We're all part of this network. It's not just her. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, it's all of us. So, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, et cetera, et cetera. But it's here. Know, we're electromagnetic beings anyway. I mean, this is part of our, you know, the structure of the human. So um, yeah, we've been, we've been lied to. We got a little carbon in us, but really we're pho photon light beings at the end of the day. That too. It's, I mean, you know, I just had a big argument. Fungus that's dormant, maybe the, the parasites are dormant. But that's maybe also the, the EMF and, and the, the 5G yeah. and all of that. See, they're not, a lot, this is, you know, he would believe it's probably the cause. I don't think it's the cause. I think it, it does stimulate the growth and stimulate the, the effects of all of it. So, you know, with it, without it, you're going to, you know, you're going to get whatever you get, but if it, it's going to be stimulated, then it's going to jump, right? It's, it's yeah. going to jump in your body. So, yeah. So, so, so before you came on, Mary, uh, yeah. Carrie broke some news on nano satellites. Want to talk about that from a general level? Carrie? Who broke it? Oh, you did Carrie. Yes. Please yeah, wait well, in Joshua though. I have talked uh, he, about it before. Jump off, take care of something. Okay. Okay, well, I, mean, right, Gary. I I hesitate to repeat the whole thing, but simply to say <laughs> that there is a, level. A, a network of, of nanosatellites, it's called Project Leonid, it's a secret project that was exposed by a researcher called Anthony Sanchez, don't know if you know who he is, uh, and his life was threatened, his family was threatened, he's gone silent completely on this subject, he did initially go out and do some interviews, he did an interview with me, we were both threatened and I have never been allowed wow. to. It was these satellites, the satellite grid is already operational. It's up there. This was, I'm talking about something yeah. that happened about, you know, seven, eight, even years ago. I don't know how many. And this was uh, coming out of Lockheed Martin and Lockheed Martin scientists. And by the way, the one thing I forgot to say was that they did a poll during the time when they were building these nano satellites, and this is what put the Lockheed Martin scientists supposedly on the run, was they did a survey to see what was the likelihood that the nano artificially intelligent nano satellites that were self-replicating would turn against humans. And they found there was a 60% chance they would. At that point, the Lockheed Martin scientists, the ones with the conscience, you could say, went on the run from Lockheed Martin. Believe that, I mean. Well, I, I, I actually do believe that. I Frank actually believe, believe, believe that if AI got so smart, it would actually look at human as unfair, no different than a puppy dog, seriously. Ray Kurzweil said to be afraid of the nano weapons. Well, I, I agree with that. And Mark Richards says that dogs are hypersensitive, by the way, to uh, nano and AI, and that the yeah. can tech, they can actually have them. I think that the military knows this. They can have a, a dog in the room when they're doing a top secret meeting in a skiff, let's say, to make sure they're not surveilled by a satellite or AI or whatever. If the dog senses it, they they can be trained to, you know, maybe bark or do whatever they're supposed to do to, to notify the humans. It's a very interesting idea. And I'm sure cats have the same ability, by the way, but cats can't be trained. <laughs> Unruly cats. How do they even keep track of their own nano satellites? Who? Good, good point. You mean, you mean the military? Them. I mean, the... the the harm is that well, you can't uh, actually, see them, you can't the, control them. The military, um, I was told, you know, you can take it or leave it, but I was told by someone who met me in an airport and delivered some information to me. And it wasn't in it was not in this country. And they told me it this is a piece of information that they told me that those nano satellites report to something called mother. And it's these are above low Earth orbit, so brain, mother brain, is brain. above above. So and no one knows about mother. Mother is a lot like the Skynet, if you will. 
Yep. That's interesting. I don't know. I'm. It's a wisp of. I don't know where it's from. Of like, don't say the word mother. I just. So I don't know if it if it uh, activates. But I did. I wanted to say something. I sorry. It, it escaped. Escape. Oh, I think. I think they are nanoforming the planet. They are putting sure. it in us. Or nanoforming. Sorry. No, yeah. nano. I'm saying it's nano forming instead of.